Sega. I joined Sega in 1993, so I'm going on my 19th year. Sega and Namco were the two giants back then. I applied to both, but just happened to interview with Sega first. I joined Sega a year before Osaki in 1992, so I'm in my 20th year. So the one project we worked on together side by side in the early days is Daytona USA. And since then, we've been a team. We constantly ask ourselves the question, in combat, what feels good? How does it feel? And I think the response has changed over time. To put it simply, we want the player to feel the character's pain. For example, when you do a roundhouse kick, your opponent goes in air. That body is pretty messed up with its face looking one way and the body facing the other direction. In real life, that would never happen. We were convinced that those motions would enhance the overall experience and increase the level of satisfaction when playing. That was and still is important to us. At the time when developing VF1, the number of polygons we were able to use was very limited. I mean compared to what's possible today. The foundation was very poorly made. But our challenge was to create a realistic, human-like character and use the most amount of polygons ever used in a game at the time. Before Akira existed, I was working on a character called Siba. I liked him. He had a very unique look. Then, one day, Siba disappeared and he was replaced by this character named Akira, wearing a white martial arts uniform. The only plausible explanation I can give is because Suzuki-san was really into Hakkaioku Ken at the time. I was told he replaced Siba with Akira because Siba ranked low in our playtest results. Rather than balancing the roster of characters, we put more emphasis on the elements that would make the characters cool and fun. The main concept behind VF3 was to have the players move around freely in the 3D field, so we added the fourth button to allow for that movement. In VF4, we ended up assigning that to the joystick instead. Adding the fourth button was fun in a way, but it was still pretty difficult for the players to handle. We came up with a tug-of-war-like mechanic where two characters would be linked together at their wrists. For example, when they're far apart, one would be able to snatch up the other or you would shoot your opponent up in the air. We actually spent a significant amount of time and worked on it, but it didn't make the cut. One of the reasons why we didn't include Takaarashi in VF4 is the motion system. We simply weren't able to express the character in the ideal manner. Another reason is we were pushing overall for a fast-paced, speedy game for VF4 and his character, due to his size and movement, felt somewhat out of place. We added him back in VF5R and by that time, the technology we had supported the motion we wanted to express. So kind of like what I have here, my chubby belly and whatnot, we were able to create better movement for this large-sized sumo wrestler. But the animation used for Taka Arashi's shadow when thrown is different from the other characters. Obviously, because he's a heavyset character, we wanted to make sure that was expressed, and we created his own animation set for him. That itself was pretty challenging. When working on VF4, we just didn't have the workflow in place to create it. But by the time we got working on VF5, we had the right technology, and giving special care and treatment just for Taka Arashi wasn't an issue. In VF4, we were capable of showing hard bodies, but not so much soft bodies. By VF5, we made a significant amount of progress, which allowed us to freely create soft bodies. Right, like the CG we're used to seeing today. But I can't think of anything where I felt so strong about something and didn't make a game. As a team, we would come up with various concepts and ultimately decide which ones fit the game. With characters and stages, I don't think we stressed too much over which ones to use. It was a pretty straightforward process. In the end, we wanted to make sure our characters and the moves were easy to understand. So, for example, Jai Kundo, Chinese Kempo, professional wrestling, and having a very well-built male character, a female character, and so on. Well, the good news is that this console release will be exactly the same as the last arcade version. It's actually a rare occasion because in the past, the overseas version of the games were a slightly older version of what was running in Japan. So, I hope hope everyone is ready to take on the challenge.